What's going on everyone? My name is Kellen Reck and today I want to show you how to shoot a daytime time lapse. Daytime time. That sounds weird. A time lapse that takes place during the day. So today we're looking specifically at time lapses that take place during the day when the sun isn't changing all that much. There's consistency to the sun. As an alternative to this, I'm gonna be doing future videos where I'll do a time lapse lesson on sunset and sunrise when, the, when basically the sun is changing over a period of time and then also nighttime time lapses. Those videos to come today is just the daytime time lapse. The time time again, that's gonna, that's just, so for these time lapses, generally what you'll want is some sort of motion in your shot. Obviously that's what makes the time lapse effective over time. Now for these daytime ones, clouds are a real key. You can see the motion of the clouds in the sky and everybody knows that if you're seeing clouds fly across a shot, well that's pretty standard protocol or pretty standard looking time lapses. Now when I went out for these examples, there were no clouds in the sky. I'm telling you seriously, there was not a single cloud. So what I did is I went into the city to get you some examples so you could see the motion of the cars and the people and all of the excitement of the city to get a little bit of motion in our shots. So the first step in setting up your time lapse is figuring out where the heck you wanna go. What's your location gonna be? And a key when you're thinking about location is again to have motion. If we went to a, you know, a random tree trunk out, outside and shot that tree trunk over the course of an hour, we're really not gonna see that much. Now, if we go into the city and get shots of cars and traffic and people cruising around over a period of time and sped up, that's gonna look real nice. So think of your best location, and when you get there, you wanna think about the, basically your internal state should be, what is the best photo that I can take in this location? So for this example, I went down to the Boston Public Garden and I set up this shot with water and swan boats and people moving around so that I had some motion. So when I'm setting up my photo, these are basically the settings that I like to go with. My aperture, I usually like to crank up. So I'm at about F22. That means my aperture is really closed down. But what that does for me is it's gonna put everything in focus. So I'm shooting in this example with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. A very wide shot of the city. I want everything in focus. So I'm at F22. Then I'll go to my ISO and make sure that it's somewhere around 100. I want my exposure to be as low as possible because I wanna use my shutter speed to adjust. So I want my shutter speed to then basically bring me to properly exposed. Now, depending where I am and if I have an ND filter, this means my shutter speed could sort of be a range, but I want it to be as long a shutter speed as possible. And the reason for this is because I want the motion of the people or the cars to blur a little bit. That way, it, you know, if I had taken this shot just one individual frame, the people or cars, they would be blurry and it would look a little funky. But when we're combining hundreds of photos, this motion blur is gonna make everything look very smooth. So now that we've properly set, framed, and exposed our photo, you're gonna wanna plug in your intervalometer. What this does is it basically allows the camera to automatically take photos on a set interval. So for this example, I set my interval to four seconds. Every four seconds, my camera takes a photo. I don't even need to be there to touch it. Now, as a rule of thumb, depending how fast the motion in your shot is, you'll want to adjust your interval. So what I'll generally do is if I'm shooting a time-lapse with clouds, I would have an interval of about seven seconds. If, if clouds are the focal point and the main movement of my shot in the time-lapse, I usually go with about seven seconds. Now, if it's a storm and the clouds are faster, that could adjust, but seven seconds for clouds. So, because I have no clouds in this and my main focus of motion is people, I made it a little bit faster of an interval. If I wait too long, people move a lot faster than clouds. So if I wait 10 seconds or seven seconds to shoot each photo, you know, a person might be on the left side of my frame and then after seven seconds might either be out of my frame or on the total opposite side of it. I wanna make sure that my motion isn't too choppy, so I speed up my interval because the motion is faster. Now, that may have been a little bit confusing, but basically, if the motion's faster in your time lapse, you want a shorter interval. So now, we wait. We let the intervalometer run. And how long, you might ask? Well, here's the magic number. Take your interval, so in this case, four seconds, and multiply it by four. 
That gives me 16, 16 minutes I have to wait until my photos are done to have a 10 second final video. It's a magic number and uh, there is a calculation to figure this out, but basically that's all you have to do. So say my interval is seven seconds, multiply that by four, seven times four, 28. I have to wait 28 minutes to have a 10 second final video. And in the meantime, I actually shot a secondary example of a clock tower in downtown Boston. So we'll use that too, just so you can see two different daytime time lapses. So once you have all of your photos taken, and this should be a lot of photos, you're gonna head over to your computer and I'll go there with you. The first step in the process is basically we wanna have our files onto the computer. So I wanna bring all of these photos into Adobe Lightroom. So let's open that up. So when I get in, you just wanna go file import and navigate to your folder and they'll just take a minute or so to import. So we've got about 250 photos, so we're gonna dive in. Once they're all in here, you just wanna to go to develop. Now what I'll usually do is I'll usually go about halfway through. The reason that I wanna be in the middle is because it doesn't so much matter for a shot like this, um, where nothing's really changing in terms of time of day, but in a sunset one, it's more important to go in the middle because that's the middle exposure between the brighter ones in, earlier in the day and the darker ones as the sun sets or rises. So I like to go in the middle regardless of the time lapse I'm doing. And then I'm just gonna start to edit. Now this is basic Lightroom editing. I don't wanna go too crazy and stylized on this because I want it to look more like a standard video rather than a stylized edit of a photo, but you can go in and just make your adjustments. So I'm just gonna quickly do a touch up on this shot here. So you see I have this photo edited and this is my edit right now. So what you wanna do at this point is click on the photo that you've made the edits on, hit Command A or highlight all of these. You can also go into Edit Select All. You want all of your photos selected and then make sure again you were clicked on your edited photo first and then you're just gonna hit Sync. Now what this will do is it'll bring up this box here and I have everything checked here because I wanna sync everything. Now this is my edits, my crop, my rotation. I want this to apply to all of the photos in this group here. So I'm gonna hit synchronize. Should be a relatively instant transfer. Now all of my photos will have the exact same settings that I put on my previous photo. So at this point, it's time to start exporting. So I'm gonna go up to file, export, and we're just gonna find a destination. So I usually bring them to the original folder these are in, and within that, create a new folder called Edited Photos. This way I know that these are my edited shots. Now, these I'll also do a JPEG at 100 quality because that'll just make things a lot easier when I'm actually editing the photos in Premiere to export as a video. Uh, I don't wanna export as, I mean, you could export as a number of different things, but JPEG has worked the best for me. So we'll export. And this is probably the longest part of the process, waiting for these hundreds of photos to export. I have 224 photos. They all of these edits applied to them. They're all going to be exported out of here. So this will take a little bit of time. So bear with me on that. While we're waiting on this, I do wanna to touch on one thing. Um, a lot of people will do their time lapses by just basically recording video and letting it run for five, 10 minutes or even longer. This is totally acceptable and totally doable. When I'm on a quick trip somewhere or moving around quickly, I'll do this quite a bit and it, it's, you know, it looks good. I will say you will not have nearly as much control with the colors as you will in this process. And also the resolution in this manner is going to be far and away better. I mean, when you record a video and basically let it run, unless you're shooting in 4K, that final time lapse is 1920 by 1080, or it's whatever resolution you're shooting your video in. This is the resolution of your photo. So this shot here is basically with the rotation and everything, it's 565, sorry, 5,666 by 3,777. I mean, that's huge compared to 1920 by 1080. We're talking about massive, massive files. These are like 6K time lapses. So you can scale in on this when it's finished. You can do a whole bunch of different things with this. That's why this method is a better looking time lapse than your sped up video 
over a long period of time. That's just, you know, something I wanted to touch on and something for you to know. So now that we have all of our edited photos ready to go, I'm gonna highlight all of them and bring them into Adobe Premiere Pro. So one thing you wanna make sure of is you wanna go up to your Adobe Premiere preferences, go to general and go to timeline. You wanna make sure that your still image default duration is just one frame. If you have this longer, the images will drop in your timeline and it won't be one image per frame and a smooth transition, it might be five seconds might be what it defaults to. So when you drop an image in, that image is a five second chunk. You're gonna end up with a crazy long time or crazy long timeline here. And that's just not what we want. So you want this to be one frame. So we'll hit okay. And make sure that your images are in order. And we'll just highlight them all and drag them right, on, right onto our timeline. It's gonna create the sequence for us at the proper resolution, which remember is a huge resolution. Um, and in this case, because of the way I edited the photo, it's closer to a 4-3 aspect ratio rather than 1920 by 1080. So when you're finished with your time lapse, that's the aspect ratio that it will be. So when you do edit this into your video, you'll have to scale it or move it around a little bit. But again, this is just because you have so much resolution here. So it's a lot larger. And it's basically the way that the camera took the photo. So you could adjust that too in camera. So you'll see now we have each frame is the motion of the shot. Now, I do wanna to touch on one quick note, is sometimes your sequence, you might just wanna check your sequence settings. When you bring your photos in, your time base may default to 30 frames, or 29.97 frames per second. I have mine set to automatically be 23.976. Um, you may just wanna go back and adjust that. It's totally fine if you export your video at 30 frames per second and you like that speed more, it will it slightly adjust um, how your time lapse looks. But remember, if you're doing 30 frames per second, you need six more photos per second of final footage. So you're gonna need a lot more photos to have as long of a time lapse. So I like to go about 24, 23.976 as my editing time base here because I can get a longer time lapse out of fewer photos. So that's just something to keep in mind. So what we wanna do is we want to set an in at the beginning, go to the last frame and set an out, and we'll just go file export, as easy as that. File, export, media. In this case, um, you can choose what you want this to be. I generally like to go Apple ProRes 422. I'm gonna go HQ so that I have the most detail in it. And you can see that my resolution's pulling from the sequence here, from the timeline, so it's this massive um, resolution. I'm gonna go 16-bit and perfect. There's no audio, so I can uncheck the audio. Doesn't quite matter. And we'll just pick a destination for this. We will just save it right here. I'm just gonna call it Boston Public Garden Time Lapse. And we'll save, and all you have to do is start your export. And then your video's done. So it's really as easy as that. The whole Premiere Pro process isn't very long. It's just a matter of bringing in the frames and converting those frames into a video. One man, one chance, waiting on an export. Would it end? No one knows. Now we have our time lapse, so you can watch it back. There's a couple initial thoughts that I have and I just wanna to touch on these. Um, number one, obviously I wish there had been clouds because we would have had beautiful clouds flying across the shot. Number two, I wish that I had maybe an ND filter so that I could have had my shutter speed even slower because these swan boats here aren't blurring as much as I would like. I'd prefer them to have a little bit more blur. It would keep their motion a bit smoother. They're relatively smooth right now, but they could be a lot smoother. So those are just some of my initial thoughts. But again, this looks pretty good and I'm happy with it. All right, everyone. I hope you learned today sort of how to do this daytime time lapse and I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely wanna see what you come up with. Go out there and start taking shots. If you enjoyed the video, definitely leave a like. Go ahead and subscribe. Ring the bell next to that subscribe button. That way you'll get notifications every time I post Wednesdays at 10 a.m. And we'll check you back in the next one. Thanks, guys.